So a lot of you guys who watched our live engine build last week commented on my method of degreeing camshafts and you wanted to see how it worked. So I figured let's do a quick video and show you. Um, and I'd like to take credit for this, but this is actually the Keith Black method of, of degreeing camshafts. And the reason why it was developed is because it, it, altering cam timing is one of the tuning elements on a nitro car. So you needed a quick, easy way between rounds to, to make those adjustments without having to break out the degree wheel and go through all the motions of that stuff. So I'll show you on this 340 here. All you need for this is a, is a straight edge, a feeler gauge, and a way to find top dead center. So here's how this works. All cam timing is based on the concept of split overlap. This is where the exhaust valve is closing, and the intake valve is just starting to open. When, like for instance, when your timing gears are dot to dot, that's what it is. It's the number one cylinder split overlap. Exhaust valve closing, intake valve's opening. When both the intake and the exhaust are open exactly the same amount, that's considered to be straight up. When the exhaust leads, or the exhaust is higher, I should say, uh, it's considered to be retarded. When the intake is higher, it's considered to be advanced. So, the first thing we're going to do is find top dead center. And to do that, just you stick a screwdriver in the number one spark plug hole. And we've already rotated this thing around to where it's at, basically it's at top dead center of the exhaust stroke. So, what we're going to do is we're going to rotate the motor back and forth, watching the screwdriver. So you see, Coming backwards, screwdriver is going down, going forward, and the screwdriver is topped out. And that screwdriver is starting to head back down. So what we're going to do here is we're splitting the dwell, right? The piston is stationary for ballpark four degrees of crankshaft rotation, and that depends on the rod ratio, how long that dwell time is. Uh, and what we're doing is we're splitting the dwell, and that's your true top dead. So, and I generally do this three times. It's kind of OCD, but it's a way that I'm absolutely certain that I've got top dead center. And there it is there, and there it is. And I look at the timing mark here, and it's actually right. I don't go by the timing marks because they're not always accurate. So now we've got top dead center of the exhaust stroke. And by the way, always make your last move in the direction of engine rotation. And that takes all of the slack out of the timing chain or gears or whatever situation you've got going there. So now, we want to check our lifters. Now on this engine, they're just barely above the lifter bores, but they're high enough that I can actually lay my straight edge across the lifters, right there. And I can see that the straight edge makes contact at all four corners. So here, 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 and here, the straight edge is in, is in contact. Now, if this cam was advanced, I would have the intake lifter slightly higher than the exhaust. And that's where your feeler gauge comes in. The, the measurement that we go by is six thousandths of an inch equals two degrees of camshaft uh, uh, timing. So if the intake is up six thousandths of an inch higher than the exhaust, and this is how we'd measure this here, find our six thousandths, six, we would be able to put this feeler gauge between the top of the exhaust lifter and the, and the straight edge. So, this works. I've checked this against every method there is. I've checked it against known cam specs. Uh, it's always like right there. It might be five thousandths of an inch, it might be seven thousandths of an inch, depending on the camshaft profile. But you're not concerned with the textbook end of this. You're concerned with your reference point for, for actually making adjustments, tuning adjustments to your camshaft. And we'll do a whole separate video on, you know, cam timing effects and, you know, when you want to advance, when you want to retard and so on and so forth. Um, also, this is a good method to check the trueness of a, of a camshaft. They're not always ground exactly perfect. What I'll do with something like this is 
after I've determined my timing at the number one cylinder on an engine on a 184-365-72 engine, uh, I'll rotate the crankshaft 360 degrees and then I'll make my checks at number six. And that will tell you if the engine is actually true or not. Now, if for some reason you can't get to the lifters and you want to try to employ this method, you can do it off of the spring retainers. Uh, what you'd have to do with this is first make sure that the spring retainers are exactly even, right, at rest. And then so you can only do this with a solid lifter engine and get, and get you know, actual results, accurate results. But you take all of the lash out and then using the multiplier effect of the rocker arm, you can make that same measurement here off of the spring retainers. Uh, but 95% of the time, it's done right off of the lifters here. Uh, and also, if the lifter doesn't quite clear the top of the bore, you can stack the lifters and get your measurement that way. It takes a little time, but you can get it. So, that's it. Quick, easy, simple method of degreeing a camshaft with a fuel gauge. I'll see you tomorrow.